story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. Like other great cities, it is home to all kinds of schools where you can get most any kind of education. There are universities, high schools, grade schools. Some students take the problem of earning a living. They enroll in a trade school. Some learn to cut hair or how to give a permanent. Still others try their hand at fashion modeling, at nursing, or taking shorthand. They learn how to be bartenders, dentists, actors, how to drive a car, or how to give a massage, how to be a tailor, a wrestler, a chiropractor, or how to be a clerk in a supermarket. All these schools are accredited. There's one that is not. It holds its classes in the cracks and crevices of the city. Because of it, I have a job. I carry a badge. It was Wednesday, December 17th. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We'd received a call from an unknown informant who claimed he had information about a series of burglaries. He refused to give us any details. He even refused to give us his name. He said he'd contact us at his own convenience. We waited. Lieutenant Friday. I am. Is there something I can do for you? I talked to you on the telephone before. I finally decided to come and talk to you. What was that name? I didn't give you any name. I told you I knew about some things that were stolen. Oh, yeah. I think I remember that call. Sit down. Thank you. I finally made up my mind it would be best to come in and talk to you. I want to do what's right. Could we have your name, please? Yeah. You can have it. Hovick. Hovick. Oscar Hovick. <laughs> I know that's kind of a hard one to spell. It's Norwegian. I figured out a way to change the spelling, but I haven't got around to it yet. H-O-V-E-J-G. You spell the Oscar with a K. Uh-huh. All right. What did you come in to tell us, Mr. Holvig? Well, if I show you something that I think is stolen, have you got some way to find out who it got stolen from? Yes, sir, we might, if the theft was reported to us. Well, I don't know anything about that part. This is all I know. I hope I'm doing the right thing. are stolen. Is that it, Mr. Hovey? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I think. I guess you fellas can find out. The initials are EF. Why do you think they're stolen? Well, I just do, that's all. Where'd you get them? Well, I found it. Where'd you find it? I'll show you where. Don't worry. I'll show you. But in my own good time. Is this all you found? I should say not. That's just a sample. I thought you could use it for identification. That's all I want to say just now. Please. All right, Frank, you want to check stolen property files, see if you can come up with a make? Yeah, sure. Mr. Hovig. Yes? What makes you think that that's stolen property? I don't think it is, Lieutenant. I know it is. How do you know? I can't tell you now. I just know it's stolen. You'll know it, too, when you see the other stuff. Well, all right, who's responsible for it, do you know? Yes, I know. Well, who is it? Well, maybe later on I'll tell you. Maybe not. I continued to question Mr. Hovig, but I couldn't pry loose any additional information that might help us. 
Frank found an identification in stolen property covering the articles Mr. Hovig had shown us. The silverware matched the description of that taken in a theft four days previously. It's all right here in the report. All right, Mr. Hovig. Apparently you're right about this being stolen property. Now you say there are some other items? Yeah. That's what I said. Can you recall any of them? Well, I didn't look them over real good. Let's see. There were a couple of ladies' fans. Ivory? Yeah. And all this silver. It's wrapped in some lace thing. Where is it? Well, uh -huh. it's right where I found it. I didn't move it an inch. Not an inch. Where did you find it? You come to my house. You meet me at my house at one o'clock, I'll show it to you. I didn't move it an inch. Well, can't you tell us where it is and leave the rest to us? No. No, it must be done my way. You see, I want to be sure. It still might be some mistake. All right, we'll do it your way. What's that address? 1307 North Camrose. It's in Hollywood, just below Gower. We'll find it. This is very important. Don't come before one o'clock and you've got to be all through by two. It's very important. We'll do our best. And don't you forget it. My name doesn't get mentioned. Well, we've worked some strange ones, but this is shaping up a real winner, isn't it? Yep, and it's getting stranger all the time. What do you mean by that? This theft report the victim filed. Listen to this. I insist that in the event of my property described above being recovered, that the police inform me first before giving out news of same to any newspaper or broadcasting station. Signed, Elma Face. Elma Face? How do you spell that? F-A-C-E. You don't suppose that's a real name? Oh, man, that's got to be. Huh? Nobody could come up with an alias like that. Frank and I decided to drop by and talk to Mrs. Face before we met Mr. Hovick at his home. Just a minute. One minute. Yes? What is it? Mrs. Face? Of course. Who did you think? Yes. Well, we're police officers. Police? Oh, great, great. Come in. Come in. Well, part of it, anyway. Oh, good Lord. Can you identify this, ma'am? Oh, yes, of course. It's mine. Oh, sit down, sit down. And a personal interview with the police to boot. Well, sit down. You don't understand. We can only stay a minute. Please. I ask you to sit down. All right. I just want to jot down a few notes. It won't take but a jiffy. Now, Mrs. Face, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Now, let's see. My notebook is here someplace. I keep thinking I should tidy up a bit, but it, it would just get messed up again, so what's the use? Oh, some of my very best thoughts are in here someplace. You know how writers are. And it would be such a shame. Do you know Tom Carlyle? What divisions do you work out of, ma'am? Oh, no, no. He was a very famous author. He wrote uh, The French Revolution about a hundred years ago. And guess what happened to his very first volume? Millions of words. A cleaning woman came into the room and threw them all away. Burned them all up. And when she was asked why she did it, do you know what she said? She said she thought the paper was just no good anymore because it had already been written on. <laughs> oh, dear, that's... Oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. Let's have it, men. Let's have it. We go to press tonight. Well, I'm afraid we can't give you a complete story yet, Mrs. Face. What do you mean? What in the world do you mean? Now, if anybody scoops me, it's going to be me, you understand? You've got the stuff. That's my silver spoon, and you've got the guy. So why shouldn't I get my own story? I am waiting for your answer. And don't forget, I can make this sound real bad if I feel like it. All we have is a lead. We haven't picked up the thief yet. We haven't recovered all of your property. Now, we should know more about it in an hour or so. Oh, th that's the way it is, huh? Yes, ma'am, that's the way. Well, where did you get that spoon? From a man who claims that he found it. Where did he find it? Well, he hasn't told us yet. We're going to meet with him in a little while. Aha! Uh -huh. 
You're going to have a rendezvous with him. Is that the idea? Yes, ma'am. A rendezvous. I'm going with you. I can, can't I? No, I'm afraid you can't. Then tell me this, Sam Spade. Where does this guy live? I'm afraid we can't tell you that either. What are you anyway, men of mystery? If you can't tell me anything, why are you here? Well, we'd like to ask you a few questions, if it's all right. All right, then. Shoot. We have your report. We thought you might remember some of the details. I didn't tell anything in that report. I didn't tell any lies, mind you. I just boiled it all down. I said that this box of stuff was stolen from my car. But I didn't say I saw the whole thing. You saw the theft, did you? Sure. What did you think? My eyes are open, Mr. Wide Open. You see, I moved in here last week with my girlfriend. Her name is Rose, and we call her Gypsy. I'm divorced, thank goodness. Oh, yes. Anyway, while we were moving in, I looked out of that window there, and I saw this guy carrying a box across the lawn. My box, my silver, my heart. Your heart? It stopped. When I saw him, I mean. Can you describe the thief for us? Oh, well... Not so it would help you much. I only saw him from the back. And he was bent over, lugging my silver away. And I was going to rush out after him, but by the time I got outside, he was in his car and going. Well, now, can you remember anything about him that might help us? He was a tall, big man. Even bent over a bit, carrying that box, I could tell that. I was a bit upset, you understand, but I did notice something that might help you. Well, what was that? He threw a glove out of the window of his car. A glove? That's right. This one. Oh, just threw it out, you know. And there was an L in the license number. And the color of the car was green. Why didn't you put all of this in your report? I told you. I didn't want to get scooped. I want it in my paper first. Now, that shouldn't be hard to understand. Well, just what paper do you write for? This one. The Southwest Record? It's a throwaway. I am the editor of this sheet. And don't call it a throwaway. It's a shopper's weekly. So you didn't want any other paper to print the story before you did. Is that it? That is what I keep telling you, man. And you haven't printed your story yet? No, sirree. Not a single word of it. You know, on second thought, it might be a good idea for you to be with us when we have our meeting this afternoon. Fine, fine. When? One o'clock. Good. That'll give me time to change. Where shall I meet you? The address is 1307 North Camrose. 1307. I'll be there. Oh, say, in case I have to ask, what's your name? Joe Friday. Uh, Friday. Friday? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a funny name. Yes, sir. I guess it is, Mrs. Face. <laughs> After talking to Mrs. Face, Frank and I had lunch. Then we drove to the address Mr. Hovig had given us. We followed him into the garage at the rear of his home. There, in that box. It's right where I found it. I didn't move it one inch. Now, you think everything in that box is stolen property, do you? Well, I don't know for sure. I don't think so. But in this cotton, that's where I found the silver that I gave to you. Uh-huh. That looks like it, all right. Sure does. When did you find this stuff, Mr. Hovig? Monday. I was neatening up this bunch of things, and I lifted that one with the string, and it broke. It turned over, and a piece of silver fell out. Well, I picked it up, and I noticed it had initials on it. I didn't recognize those initials. Then I didn't know, so I forgot to mention it. Mention it? At supper. But after they went to bed, I came out to lock up, and I began to think about it. So I looked a little more in the box, and I saw the lace and a picture of somebody that's not in the family. Yes, sir, we understand. Uh -huh. 
I never trusted that fellow the minute I looked at him. Now, who do you mean, Mr. Hovey? My son-in-law. Oh. My own son-in-law. You think he might know something about this, do you? Oh, I'm not accusing him. That's up to you fellas to accuse him. I'm only trying to do what's right. But when you tell my daughter, you leave me out of it. That's the whole idea. I want to be a good citizen and respect the law and everything. And my daughter might get the wrong idea. Yes, sir. Three months they're married and he loses his job. So Oza tells me, and since I want to do the right thing, I say, sure, come ahead. Move in here with me. I won't charge you any rent. So? So, when they moved in here, they brought this stuff with them, is that right? Yeah, that's right. This carton, too? Yeah. What day was this? Well, let's see. I think... What day is this? This is Wednesday. Well, that's right. Then it must have been Sunday that he brought it over. You're sure now? Yeah. I'm sure. Yoo-hoo! Is anybody here? Say, is this... Oh! Uh-huh. Well, here I am. This lady has had some things stolen from her recently. Do you want to take a look through that carton? Which carton? Where? Where? Which right one? Right here, right here. Oh! Oh, there it is. Yes, that's it. Oh, everything seems to be here all right. Well, men, have you got a line on the thief? We think so, yes. Oh, that's real great fast work, I must say. Oh, what's this gentleman's name? That's Mr. Hovig. You said you wouldn't give my name. Oh, yes, I saw it outside on the mailbox. Oscar, isn't it? Say, now, what's this all about? Why does he look so upset? I'm sorry. I'm very, very sorry. What for? Because your property was stolen. Well, sure, thanks. But here you've gone and found it for me again, so no great harm done. Besides, the stuff wasn't worth much. It's just that you get mad when you see somebody taking it right from under your nose. I'm sorry. It was a terrible thing to do. What's with him? It's a family matter, Mrs. Face. What time is it? 1.45. Oh, I'll be coming home any minute. My son-in-law took Oza over to the doctor's at 1 o'clock. It's just over here in the burn building. And that's why you wanted us to be here at 1, so we wouldn't be around when he came back, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. But now, it, it doesn't matter. What kind of a car is he driving? His own car. A green car. With an L in the license number. How did you know that? Oh... Sure. You saw it. You like to tell us about it, Mr. Hoving? He was a good boy. A fine boy. I didn't hate him. Not at all. I don't know why I did it. They love each other. He'd, he'd do anything to make her a good husband. I was like, I was crazy. I couldn't stand it to be alone. Even the piano. It's no good to play it unless there's somebody to listen. Even if they're not paying much attention, just moving around the house. It's nice to know that somebody is there. A year or two ago, my, my daughter began to have boyfriends. I talked to her. I, I told her that she had plenty of time. Uh, you don't go around with the boys when you're just a kid. I told her. And then Larry came along. He was working over at the service station. And then before I knew what was going on, they came to me and said they were getting married. Well, I couldn't talk. It was just like when her mother died. I, what can you talk about? On the night they got married, it's strange. It, it wasn't so bad. We had some drinks, and after a while, I got to sleep. But then next morning, and Every morning of every day since then, it's... What's the use of even getting out of bed? Who cares whether you're up or not? 
Uh, about ten days ago, Larry lost his job. It wasn't his fault. The boss over at the service station gave the job to his cousin or somebody, and so they came back here to live with me, and Larry said he'd, he'd help pay for the groceries and so on. Well, I, I didn't want his money. They moved their things over here and they stored them in the garage, is that right? Yeah. After they went to bed, I, I came out and I just stood here looking at those things. And the next morning, I felt terrible. Worse than before. They weren't here. Then I remembered that I told them they could have the station wagon and they were going out to the beach with another couple and I really didn't care. I was feeling sorry for myself and them going off and taking my station wagon. You know? Yes, sir, I think so. Well, you know the rest. We'd like to have you tell us anyway, Mr. Hovig. Well, I had a music lesson over in Selma. And afterwards, I just sat in the car, his broken down old one, the green one. And then I saw this lady and another one unloading their car down the street. Cartons and things and... It reminded me of the ones in the garage. I thought if I grabbed one and put it with Larry's and then tell the police, they'll say Larry's a thief. Even if anybody saw me, it didn't matter. It was Larry's car. They'd blame him. That's why you threw that glove out of the car, is that it? Yes. How could I do such a thing? I never did anything so wrong. Never. Well, I uh, certainly want to thank you, Mr. Hovick, for helping me carry this stuff of mine over. It was real neighborly. Now, if you'll help me put it in my car, I think I can take it from there. Lady, you heard what I said. I told you everything. Told me what? I, I don't think I know what you're talking about. Well, I told you. Rubbish. Haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Uh, Lieutenant Friday, why don't you and your partner just chase along? We don't need you any more that I can see. No, I'm afraid you don't understand, Mrs. Face. You keep out of this, Friday. This now is something personal between Mr. Hovig and myself. I'm sorry, Mrs. Face. It's a police matter now. We'll have to take Mr. Hovig downtown. Now, you just hold on a minute. You know as well as I do that he didn't commit any crime. You heard his story. You can't arrest a man just because he loves his daughter. I'm afraid that was the trouble. What do you mean by that? Maybe he loved her too much. June 5th, trial was held in Municipal Court of the Los Angeles Judicial District, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect pled guilty to the charge of petty theft, one count. Petty theft is punishable by a fine not to exceed $500, or by imprisonment in the county jail for a period of not more than six months, or both such fine and imprisonment. Thank you.